Bluebirds, that's our word. Uh, brought to you by Bitcot and Fiendphone and music by 3 chainlinkscom It's another Flaggetry Month. We only did one show last month, but you know it was the shortest month. So we're going to do the Rothbard uh, Don't Feed Your Kids <laughs> flag. Um, and who do I have today? You have Matt Pritchard from Sauce. I am back. Oh, finally. Back in the dead. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to have some time again. Yeah, so uh, I, I know you're probably dying to talk about Star Wars because... That's pretty much all you ever do, am I right? Uh, that's basically the only thing I do. Yeah, okay. is, is watch Star Wars, and I, I now I watch the uh, Star Wars Rebel cartoon that's on. Uh, I of course watch it on the internet, but um, <laughs> it's fantastic. So I'm loving it. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think about the movie? Because I don't know anything about the cartoon. I'm not that into Star Wars. Oh yeah, no, no. no. Which, uh, well, the which, uh, by the way, I need to say I have talked about Star Wars on the Lawbirds more than I have talked about Star Wars in my entire life. <laughs> which is like a total of about like maybe four hours, but it's good. It's yeah, good for you. I guess so. But anyway, well, I, uh, I finally saw the, the movie for a second time, um, uh, maybe three, four weeks ago. And I like, I liked it even more the second time. Uh, I think that everyone after the first week after the movie was out, um, everyone went super hipster and just decided to hate it for completely ridiculous reasons. Um, many of which have probably been discussed. I know we 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 talk about we talked about the uh, the white genocide uh, SJW agenda that has been inserted into Star Wars apparently yeah. um, because you know there's a black guy and a and a girl in it. Um, that that means which, that it's that it's cuck, cuckoldry propaganda, of course. Exactly. <laughs> that makes that literally makes me laugh every time I think about it. <laughs> I think um, these people are more obsessed with cuck uh, with cuck holdery than even cuck holds are. But anyway, yeah, yeah, no, completely. Yeah. It's insane. Oh, I did see something recently where uh, apparently there's uh, a ton of um, parody porn uh, videos coming out based on the election, and like every single one of them, uh, Bernie Sanders is a cuck hold the entire time. It's it's like <laughs> it's multiple companies have done it, but they all chose the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's that's kind of a side note, but uh, I don't know. I, I I really I really enjoyed this movie. I think it's it's really set a great tone for where the series is going. It's fun again. The characters are great, and uh, I I don't know. I've I've I just saw a lot of really worthless complaints about the movie, um, yeah. and I I don't know. Get over yourselves. Star Wars is great again. We made Star Wars great again. God damn it. <laughs> All right, so uh, it's just a rehashing of New Hope. I mean, it kind of is. I'm not going to disagree with that. It's, I mean, they blew up the Death Star again, which, I mean, that's fine. I don't really care. But, uh, you know, we didn't. they didn't at least try and make Kylo Ren into Darth Vader. Like, he actually had, you know, the internal turmoil. And uh, I, really, I really enjoyed that. And, uh, I mean, BB-8, of course, is just the best thing that's ever been created. Uh, that, that puppet yes. and all the CGI that they put on it is is fun and amazing and um i i am really excited to see where they go i know they're doing like all the spin-off movies that are coming out over the, ne the next you know infinity years uh mm -hmm. also sound pretty interesting uh the new the new movie coming out this december rogue one is being kind of described as both a heist movie and a war movie is that, um, is that the one where they kind of go into the history of uh god damn it han solo <laughs> uh no that one's okay. actually in a couple of years this one is about the rebels who stole the plans for the first death star um so it's gonna have darth vader in it again apparently which is awesome because darth vader is the coolest thing ever uh i <laughs> you could basically put darth vader in anything and i will probably love it with the exception well, of the prequels. uh yeah. the prequels yeah but yeah he really wasn't in the prequels though except for the very last thing and then they ruined it with that no yeah oh my <laughs> god the frankenstein <laughs> coming off of the table it's 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 so absurd and and the, just the worst part of the no is that the uh the blu-ray release of the original trilogy now in return of the jedi when mm -hmm. uh, the emperor is torturing luke to death you know and and darth vader picks him up and throws him down the the, the hole um it, it was originally like he looks at the emperor he looks at luke he looks at the emperor it's like you you can see obviously like he's conflicted and then he decides to pick up the emperor and murder him um now when he does it he's looking back and forth and he goes no 
<laughs> no! And then picks up the Emperor and throws him down the shaft. You're kidding and me, they did I, that? It's just, yes, they did that. Oh. They, they've they literally, every single release of Star Wars on video since the special editions, uh, they have made changes, made additions, yeah. and also, this is what's crazy, is they've gone back and changed some of the changes they made back to the originals. Like, they did this thing... Uh, I can't remember if it was the special edition when it came out or if it was the DVD release that came uh, in the early 2000s. But the <laughs> there's when Darth Vader cuts off Luke's hand and he falls down the shaft in Cloud City. Uh, in the original cut, it's silent. He just, you know, he just kind of resigns himself, jumps off, and falls to his fate. Yeah, and now he goes, um, ah! Yeah, then he goes, ah! the whole way down but then they went back and they removed that and they may have added it in again but it, it's like they they have gone back and gone like like what what is he doing he's taking just these these minor things that have literally nothing to do with how the movie actually plays you know it's it's just it has nothing to do with like you know i really think that this scene like i wanted the special effects to look better and i wish we could we had the technology to do this at the time it's not that like yeah. he's just tinkering with I this wish we had the tech, I think we wish we had the technology for him to scream when he fell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just it's crazy, but I mean, uh that that's all out of their hands now, which is which is thank just God. thank God. Yeah. So, I don't know. Hopefully uh and this is actually cool, more Star Wars news. They uh um so there was this big fan project that took years to complete. It's called the Despecialized Edition. Oh, um I love it. I haven't seen them yet. What? But oh, there's God. actually uh, so a different group recently found an intact 35 millimeter print of uh, A New Hope, and they spent like I don't know how much money, but they they cleaned up the print and everything, and and did like high resolution scans of each of the film plates, and they put it online. So it's like it's the original cut. It's it's literally what was shown in theaters. Um, nice. And they didn't advertise it, so it took a while for news outlets to start kind of picking up on it. But but by that point, uh, you know, it's it's up there. It, it's it's up there forever. <laughs> yeah. But that that looks pretty awesome. I do. I definitely want to check that out. Like it doesn't apparently have the same like sharpness that you get out of the Blu-ray. But you know they didn't fuck up and butcher uh, you know cinematic history. So yeah, there's I, that. I was reading something that like I guess uh, A New Hope is like the only movie that has ever been entered into the Library Cong of Congress um, that is not in the Library of Congress because the, uh, I guess Lucas sent them the specialized version. And they said, no, yeah. it has to be the original version because that's what we approved. Yeah, so, and he wouldn't do it. Yeah, he wouldn't do it. <laughs> so, Because he's a you, maniac. Yeah, I don't know. Has he done anything good? I mean, has he done anything um, good? People say, no, people say uh, that THX was good. I did not. No, no, no it's, it's boring as fuck. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen the original, uh, uh, the student film version, but I did try to watch the like theatrical version with uh robert duvall in it and i was first of all i was bored to tears and that's the kind of sci-fi i love i love boring plotting sci-fi mm. um but i literally turned it off when there was a visual effects shot that was re that was redone with cgi yeah and then, I, I i couldn't even believe it yeah the other one was american graffiti american graffiti yeah i was not a fan i have not watched it i have mm. no desire to yeah, I, I, it's literally like every everything that I've read about the kind of production process of the Star Wars movies. It's like he had this like a kind of a cool idea um, for Star Wars, but then sorry, my cat is scratching at my door. So that's that's fine. Um, we're all about cats. So yeah. oh, oh yeah, yeah, this yeah. isn't the fiends. Uh, right, how could you sure. not be? <laughs> <laughs> um, but he, uh, you know, he the movie he wanted to make originally um, was kind of episode one i mean it was it wasn't that story but there was all sorts of like he had all of this shit in his original script about like political stuff that that nobody it will not play with an audience nobody cares like about some stupid blowhard making uh you know like people with laser swords fight each other over trade disputes um so i i've really come around to the position that he had like he had some some in the, familiar, like broad the strokes yeah. <laughs> like in the broad strokes, he had he had a great idea and he created this great world. But I mean, even the look of Star Wars, everything was all Ralph McQuarrie's art, uh, his paintings, which are awesome, by the way. If you ever look up the concept art for the Star Wars movies, it's like incredible. Mm. Um, and and people would ask George on set, you know, like, well, what do you want? Like, how do you want to do this? And he'd say, go look at Ralph's paintings. I was like, okay, 
go look at what someone else came up with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think he's a great idea guy. Like some of the, the ideas that he comes up with, and when other people make it, it's actually good. It's not yeah, always. I mean, I, not always. <laughs> uh, Red tails. Not always, but yeah. Yeah. Well. Well. Again, he. It's like. That that was supposedly directed by someone else, but the, all the behind yeah, right. the scenes footage, he's Come like on. with yeah. the director the whole time, and it and like I remember seeing bits of that and being like, this looks like a George Lucas movie, and yeah. I don't mean that in a good way. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I liked it. What was the other thing? Um, oh, she's she's a feminist. Ray is a feminist because oh she wouldn't God. hold she wouldn't hold his hand. What? <sighs> Well, I would. I don't know. I don't even know what to do with these people. Like they, like. But if it's he, the but most if, brainless. But if she held his hand, wouldn't that make BB-8 a cuck? Pick one. <laughs> oh, that's right. Didn't they call him a little cuck ball or something? Yeah, yeah. Well, four chan did. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that, that that's like somewhat different. <laughs> yeah. But you know, no, 4chan's I, I can't. I can't stand. <laughs> So, I mean, oh, I know. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it, <laughs> it's the asshole of the internet. You know, it's 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 a it's a just a cesspool of fail. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of great memes, but you know, ninety nine point nine nine percent of the users are not the ones that are creating the dank ass memes. Yeah, it's just about Steve Miller Miller. We just just need to live live off his memes, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the other thing? Um, yeah, uh, I guess for some reason. Um, Mace Windu and uh you know and uh Darth Vader originally I guess and um all all these other black characters that were in Star Wars they're not they're not uh token characters but Finn is how does that Oh work? but Finn's he's a yeah no 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 he's a token character you know uh because because the alt right exists and they have a bone to pick with something bone uh, in their nose. Ho, ho. Oh, see, I did it. A racist joke. Oh, 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 oh wow. wow. There it was. Yeah, <laughs> there it was. So funny. It's, this is, we're on the cutting edge of like, mm. you know, this is so, social commentary and, and, and biting humor and wit here. Yeah. Well, Cause we're going back to old blackface humor, but anyways, go ahead. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> no, but I, I mean the, the, like, who cares if if the character is black? I mean, but is he none black? of those characters. What I mean is he really black? I mean, because we're talking about a, a galaxy far, far away. There's no Africa oh. <laughs> galaxy far, far away. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you meant the actor. I was like, oh yeah, the I'm actor. Yeah, pretty sure he's a black person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, I'm, but I'm talking about in this universe. I mean, there's no really like Europeans or Africans in space, right? No, I know. <laughs> that, yeah, no, completely. So. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he's, he's, he certainly could not call that character an African American. Oh, that. Uh, oh, yeah. You know. We've heard that. Where, where did I hear? Where did they see that from? So there was someone, some lady, who said that that this character was an African American. When he, he was in, in actuality, he's not an African American. He's from what is it, South Africa? Where was he from? A Nigerian. Uh, his parents. But, his parents are from Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah, but he's he's he he's a British guy. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, he grew up in in the UK. Yeah. So. He's lived there long enough to have like a, a very, I don't know exactly what kind of a British accent, which which di- <laughs> kind of dialect it is within uh, within a British accent. But he's he's a British man. Yeah. Okay, okay, so that's just ridiculous. I mean, people, yeah, but but who the fuck cares yeah. if the, if there's a black person in the in the movie and the and the girl won't hold his hand and the girl you know can fly the ship and and, the and hold the lightsaber. Light. <laughs> like like oh um, yeah and the ball is white like like just the it boggles my mind that people care about any of this <laughs> but they do i don't know why i know they but do. they do but yeah. somehow they do it <laughs> the, one of the things i've also heard was that people were saying that that finn was a pointless character and it was absolutely worthless like he'd had no like character and i'm like what are you talking about i thought that was the most interesting thing is like we actually get to see like what's behind the mask and like what's what's yeah. going on behind these stormtroopers because before then all they were were just you know shooting in white uniforms that's all they were exactly it's you know it's just a robot to shoot you know yeah. like there's the... but you've never we never saw a stormtrooper take their helmet off in in the star wars movies yeah um you know and i mean it was a, it was a great idea like i could could it have been a little more developed probably but mm. I mean, it's a sci-fi action movie for kids and families. Like yeah. it, it, we're not, oh. not we're not talking or you know, like 
Yeah, I don't I don't know. I thought his character was great. I thought he did really well in it. Uh he was funny. I you know, I I was in it the entire time. I never there was not a single performance in that movie uh except for maybe Max von Sydow in the beginning uh that I was that I thought, you know, like wow, this person sucks or like I or I'm not I'm not thinking about them as that character, you know. I'm like I I wasn't that I was never thinking of Poe Dameron going like, "Oh, Oscar Isaac is doing this." You know, I was in it. Poe Dameron it, like he was him same with finn like i i never i never got taken out i never had my i never had my kind of uh the illusion shattered in that in in that way yeah unless they were talking about parsips then um oh yeah yeah, yeah then, <laughs> then i'm taken out a little bit but i don't know i thought it was great um i just i just don't understand this whole alt-right reaction to it and i think there was also some some feminist reaction to it we've never we originally were like going talking about this and saying like oh they're talking about white genocide this whole thing and then everyone was saying oh no that turned out to be a giant troll and so we were like okay we yeah. were wrong and, and then it didn't turn out to be yeah. a giant and then actually, troll yeah <laughs> i mean I, I think the people on twitter did that deliberately and that mm. was a joke but then these these idiots in like that that follow these people and they they actually like latched onto that and started and actually started saying that like i i think i rem, i don't know if you sent it to me or i sent it to you but there was a a, a youtube video review per, like alt right perspective on star wars and I think you it sent was that literally like yeah, yeah it, and the guy he you know i don't know if it was like maybe 2 minutes in he starts saying like and this movie it, it is actually white genocide he's like and and i'm going to explain why and he started talking and i was like oh my god like you're not joking this you, it's like life imitating memes <laughs> like <laughs> i think what ended up happening was there actually was some people who thought this was white genocide and was doing all that stuff and then twitter took it up and was like oh let's let's use this to troll this is a good idea to troll people right with. right and then okay and then it just kind of brought it to some some light but that's my and, and okay and i i mean i i have zero tolerance now for like arguing with people or reading things that are that are completely brainless so do you are they saying it is literally like white genocide like they're they're yes. like putting white people in camps to kill them or is that some sort of rhetorical <laughs> device <laughs> they're saying it's it's the same as as that in in respects to uh the they're trying to push propaganda to get white people to stop breeding as much so that we will be the ethnic minority so that they can take over and it and, and in that respect it is actually genocide i mean it's morally equivalent to you know ovens which is absurd oh my god absurd and, but you oh know me God. i love i love reading this just nonsense and just going <laughs> you have a, yeah you have a much higher pain tolerance than, yeah. than i do for that it's, stuff. it's not a pain tolerance it's sort of a it's sort of a um it's sort of a, an ideological masochism i guess i love uh -huh. like reading this <laughs> jw little... stuff and and alt-right <laughs> stuff and going like man these guys are the same they're the exact same <laughs> thing there i i will say that there's this hilarious uh google extension uh that i saw uh that apparently it would take um any sort of social justice warrior commentary and just replace like men with like uh with Jews and like it turned it all Nazi propaganda mm -hmm. and it was indistinguishable from Nazi propaganda. It was like you just switch out some of the words and the and the rhetoric <laughs> uh is is there. Someone should make the exact same thing, but reverse it. So anytime you read alt right propaganda. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It makes it a bit <laughs> Oh my God! Maybe I'll do that. Yeah. Hey, you got some time? Why not? Why not? Um, yeah. So I I I, I kind of like reading that stuff, but I also love reading stuff like this. Like, um, apparently there was a uh, an article in the uh, New World Odor. I'm thinking this is some sort of like parody website, but it's great. The entire human race <laughs> is problematic, and the left can't work with them anymore. A uh, conference by a lefty activist held by, held a panel discussing how every single person on this godforsaken planet is problematic and they can no longer work with anyone. The discussion started when news broke that the young punk who stabbed fighting uh who punk young punk stabbed fighting clan members this is written badly in Anaheim <laughs> posted racist That's and really sexist shocking stuff. to me that it's poorly written. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on his Facebook page. This kid is not a hero. I don't care if he got stabbed beating the shit out of KKK members. I refuse to work with him or help him with any cause, uh, causes associated with him, said PhD tenured Mar uh, professor on Marxist analysis. I want my donation back. <laughs> 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 and it just kind of goes on and on because, you know, they're trying to be like yeah. the onion. But, um, but it, it kind of does kind of go like that. Like they can't, they're not, they're not ever going to be effective because they keep finding 
things problematic with every single thing, right? Um, yeah, and, absolutely. And and I, there's even kind of a uh, if you look at like specifically like the Black Lives Matter uh, movement, something that I find like is really like odd and a little bit specific to them uh, is that uh, when when I've seen videos of people where they like they ask them like, hey, like, uh, can you tell me about you know your your message or whatever? And they're obviously uh, used to people like reporters coming up and trying to like trap them and get a, like a quick bad quote. So they, you know, I I can attribute some of this to them just being like, you know, leave me alone. I don't like I'm not gonna give you I'm not gonna take your bait and get a sound bite for you. Uh, but it's a lot of times the uh, the rhetoric is. Uh, it's not my job to educate you about these issues. Go and find out for yourself. <laughs> Do your research. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and it's kind of yeah. like, w what kind of like social movement doesn't want allies and like who are like genuinely interested in what you have to say and like, hey, you know, maybe there's a way to to not have the cops killing black people like this like hey maybe we can discuss that and be like no go take a, a, a class at your local community college this is not my job to to educate you yeah that, like that's just it's a little odd to me and 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 like i said a lot of it can probably be attributed to like just trying to avoid providing sound bites to media outlets that are that are trying to jump on what they're saying but it's 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 very bizarre yeah and I guess during the debate, um, I guess now they're kind of mad at Sanders. I, I think this is what's happening. I'm not sure. But I guess Bernie Sanders says that it, uh, unless you're white, you don't know what it's like to live in a ghetto. You don't know what it's like to be poor. Um, I'm going to take some disagreement with that because I have been poor and I have actually lived in a ghetto. In fact, one of the other Lulberts, Steve Miller Miller, currently lives in a ghetto and he's he uses that as a joke a lot of the times but he actually does how could you not know what it's like yeah. living in a ghetto when you actually live in a ghetto just because well, of the, just because of mil melanin melanin well well yeah is, is he white yeah no he's a sumo yeah well then he can't white. understand what it's like he doesn't know what it's like to live in a ghetto then okay and you're white too right mm-hmm okay so and you said you lived in a ghetto yeah you probably just don't understand your own experience. <laughs> yeah, I lived in the corner of Don, Don, was it Donna and Carrie? Donna and Carrie in, in Las Vegas when I first moved here. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought I had done my homework to figure out where the bad parts of Las Vegas was. And I thought I had a decent area. And I was like, oh, 400 bucks a month. That sounds good. And I looked at the, you know, the, uh, the, the Google Maps in the area, and I was like, okay, it doesn't look too bad. It's not, you know, the ritziest area, but whatever. And I got there, and I was just looking around, and I was like, what did I get myself into? What did I just Oh, do? well, I already yeah. signed the lease. I just, One year. I can do it for one year. I can do it for one year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I got out. But um, it was an interesting experience nonetheless. Nothing bad happened. Um, there was, like, one instance where when I was moving out, there was, like, there was a, a couple of um, – you know, black kids hanging out and like, they kept looking at me and I was like, kept looking at them. And finally one of them had enough guts to call me out as a cop, um, which seems to be right. like the tone on the internet too. You know, Oh, you hate my movie cop. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <I'm> like, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, if I'm a uh, cop, yeah. why am I living here? Um, I think they get paid pretty well. Don't they? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, relative to other people probably, but I don't think that, you know what they're being paid officially probably isn't like stupidly high. Well, it's enough but, to have know, like a get... wife and house and kids and all that stuff and be a soldier. There's, I mean, there's but... all the other, yeah, exactly, and and there's the you know the the other streams of income that they get from you know asset seizure and 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 you know taking money from crime scenes and and things like that. So yeah, taking bribes and all that fun yeah. stuff. But yeah, yeah. So did you like uh, Alongside Not? I think you saw it before me. I heard you were a fan. Am I right? Oh, yeah. This this movie is a brilliant piece of cinema. Yeah. It's, uh, you, you actually it's, own a copy of it, don't, don't you? Like an official uh, copy? Am I right? Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I'm going to offer you it, a challenge. I want you to watch it again, but this time turn subtitles on. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> you have to watch it. I'm, just, I'm not going to describe anything after that. but What? <laughs> Watch, What's different about the subtitles? <laughs> I've just just trust me on this. Watch it with the subtitles on. I'll, I'll, I will. I'll, I'll. I will say one thing. You remember the the hooker, right? The the hooker. Yeah. Okay. The tattoo talks, and they're actually. And it actually. What? It tells you what it says. 
Yeah. <laughs> the tattoo what? speaks. The tattoo speaks. It says, don't tread on oh me. Oh, my God. <laughs> but um anyways I've, I've already i've seen the movie twice and it's uh it it kind of it's 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 kind of rough because like i totally understand like making movies is really really like super hard and it's nothing but an endless series of compromises but at the same time like this was just like horrific from end to end it was just so unwatchable and just so grating and boring <laughs> like the, the the action sequence where he's in the hotel and the and the two I think they're FEMA guys are you know they're trying to catch him, and one of them it's like this tense action scene and one of them is is literally waiting for an elevator. Yeah, <laughs> he's standing outside the elevator going, "Oh man, when's this elevator going to get here so I can continue running after this guy?" Yeah. It's like this is boring as fuck. This is not an action sequence. My, my favorite was when they were breaking in and they were spending hours messing around with the light sockets. Like, get on with yeah. it. <laughs> just, just, I, I get it. You're doing technical stuff. I get it. That's all you need to know. It's like the computer, like the, the like government data center. It's, it's like a utility <laughs> closet with like circuit, br- like these large, like electrical, like meters and things like, that. oh my God, it's so bad. Anyway. And, and then there's just a ton <laughs> of stuff in front of a green screen. I, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll stop talking about this movie because I, I <laughs> like, you, you could just talk about this movie forever. <laughs> yeah. I, I looked, I saw the trailer and I was like, this is interesting. I think I, I did a whole talk about what happened with this, but I saw that. And then I was like, oh my God, I can't believe how bad this is when I started seeing clips of it. Like, I, okay. When that trailer originally got posted a couple of years ago, I commented on it uh, on YouTube and I said, do not want. <laughs> and J. Neil Shulman wrote this like two sentence reply about like how I don't understand agorism <laughs> and like my critique is all is terrible. I was like, I literally just said, do not want. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, it's because you're a narc. It's because you're a narc. But well, I, I am a narc. So. Yeah. I got a P.O. box here in town. And I'm going to order mm-hmm. it now that I have a P.O. box, so I don't have him showing up at my door or anything like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but now that I can order it, I am going to order it as soon as I get around to it. Um, I can actually get paid in a couple of days. I'll, I'll order it when I get paid, um, even though mm-hmm. I have the money to do it right now. I just want to. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah. buy a copy and send it to uh, Red Letter Media for the Wheel of the Worst. Here's the thing. So. I, I don't think they'll do it because a lot of the stuff that would make it kind of funny, like bad funny, they wouldn't understand. They would oh, not I don't care yeah. about that. The Wheel of Worst is not about watching an entertaining movie. It's about watching a, just a, a terrible movie. And some, sometimes these guys, they watch these things that are just like so painful and just just like just double terrible. down. It's like, I, yeah, it's like I, was I, watching wanna, that I want today. to cause them pain. <laughs> <laughs> I, was... I want to cause them pain for my own amusement. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was watching Double Down the other day because I saw they did like this explain Double Down, and I was like, okay, I have to watch this now because I saw yeah. the, the original one with Max Landis where they were talking about that movie. And, oh, it was great! <laughs> Especially oh, when, when she gets shot in the head. <laughs> and he's oh like, my god! Oh. Is that the Neil Breen movie? Yes. Or yeah. yeah. Oh my god! Neil Breen, fantastic, fantastic yeah. stuff. <laughs> I, I'm, I've been on this trip lately, just watching nothing but bad movies ever since this. Like, because I had watched um, Garbage Pail Kids before I saw um, this, and right. then after I saw it, I was like, okay, I'm gonna watch Troll Two again. And I watched Troll Two again, and then I watched The Happening, and I fell in love. I actually love that. That was the first thing I did after I saw that was go on Amazon and buy it on Blu-ray. <laughs> oh my god, I saw that in the theaters, and it was like, oh, oh, I tell remember- me how that, tell me how that happened in the theaters, please. What was like the, the thing was like? It, like it was it was funny but looking back at it in retrospect like i that movie if i had gone in knowing that it was going to be garbage it would have been great yeah. but <laughs> m night Shyamalan had only really made one big big bad mistake previous to that and that was lady in the water what did he make so that i was before? like you know what i think he did i thought that came after i think that i think that movie was a response to all the criticism from the happening and the last airbender, oh. wasn't it? I think oh, so. Man. Because the the at the very oh, no, no, end, the happening definitely came before last airbender. Yeah, because they announced that they he was doing it in in uh, in the happening at the very end of the movie. She's wearing a um, an avatar backpack and she goes into a bus, and the number of the and the number on the bus is twenty ten. Oh my god! Are you kidding me? I'm I'm not kidding you. <laughs> Holy fuck! Oh my god! <laughs> You just blew my mind, but but I I was just miserable watching that movie in the theaters because I I don't remember what came out before, but it, it was like I was like oh, you know what I'll just I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, 
Uh, maybe he just had one bad movie because I really liked The Sixth Sense and I still do. I love Unbreakable. Signs it no. has its problems, but is uh, like I, no, I enjoyed I it. it. I hate it. Okay. That movie. Uh, Oh, The Village came out before that. Yes, that's, that's what it was. Yeah. And I okay. hated The Village. Oh, man, did I hate The Village. And so I was like, you know, I'll, I'll give him a chance. And then I saw that movie and I was just like, what is this? Like, that was the worst goddamn movie. Like, Plants. That was the movie. Was was Plants and Running from the Wind and people <laughs> killing themselves in really hilarious ways. Yeah, they try to make it suspenseful, but you just can't help but laugh because it has, like, perfect comedic timing. Yeah, <laughs> like, they, like there's they no filmed one. it with comedic timing <laughs> you just can't and, ignore it it's really like they're just they're running from the breeze at one point i was just like this like this is so terrible yeah and, the, so and then bad. when it catches up to him they're like nothing happened <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you mr Shyamalan. yeah nothing happened <laughs> and and they oh also spoil God. the movie like yeah. in, the, in, the, in the third scene <laughs> And and later in the first act, they explained what that was, and that was you know. I know. Well, that what was with that too, and like the guy, he just like this like random you know redneck from bumfuck nowhere, just he, he goes out and says, yeah, well you know maybe it's the plants, maybe it's a defense mechanism, and like he explains this whole thing. Oh, he's and talking like, to the plants after he yeah. was talking to the plants. Oh God, yeah, he's talking to the plants, and <laughs> and and then at the end, I was like, it's really the plants. Like the, it really was the plants the whole time. Like I was, <laughs> I was so mad. Yeah, and no, it was it was the plants, but it was also an un. It was a thing that they could never fully understand, and they'll just put some answer in the textbooks. That's what they said at the very beginning, and that's what ended up happening. It was some strange phenomenon and, and then, that science will never explain. Yeah, and and but then it like happens again at the very end. Like yeah. it's like, oh, oh, this is the big one though. It's like who cares? Yeah, because now it's happening in was it France? Was that France? I, I yeah, guess that was I think France. So. Yeah. I'm gonna ride my bicycle to work today. I'm gonna ride my bicycle to work today. Oh, it's happening! Oh, everyone stopped Uh-oh. walking. Oh, sequel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nope. please make a sequel. Please <laughs> make a sequel. I, I, I had uh, I had my friend come out from uh, from L.A. and we were watching that. I was like, you have to watch it. It's great. <laughs> and he was like, okay. Yeah. Oh, it was it was the best thing ever. That's all we've been talking about. Like he's been hitting me up on Facebook, like, like you plan on murdering me? Did, were you planning on murdering me in my sleep? <laughs> like what? <laughs> no. <laughs> what? <laughs> but, oh, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, back to Sanders. Um, apparently, he's. Um, I don't know if you knew this or not, but did you know he was an economic illiterate? Uh, this is the kind of a thing that's been going around. No, for that's a while. actually that's news to me. Okay, so. Apparently, he's an economic illiterate. I was not aware of this. But um, I guess he was saying during the debate, was it right during the debate? Sunday? Yeah. So he said that NAFTA was supported by the secretary and it cost us 80, 800,000 jobs worldwide, uh, nationwide, uh, tens of thousands of jobs in the Midwest, blah, blah, blah. Look, I was on a picket line in the early 90s, and you don't need a PhD in economics to understand that the American worker should not be forced to compete against the people in Mexico making 20 cents an hour. Then he keeps going on about Vietnam and other stuff. The problem is... Um, there was actually a big job surge uh, after NAFTA. I don't think it was because of NAFTA, but uh, there definitely was a job surge after that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're still way above what we were in 93. Yeah. And the, the other part of it is like he's he's the, like this awful nationalist. Like, I understand that people care about poor people. I totally do. I do, too. But, you know, people that live in Mexico are a lot poorer than people in America, Mm -hmm. generally. And people who live outside of Mexico are generally a lot poorer than people in Mexico. Like, uh, Mexico is actually doing fairly well by worldwide standards. Mm -hmm. standards. Uh, But it's, it's... I, I like I find it just absolutely despicable this this stuff where it's like we have to protect American jobs and and blah, 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 because it's it's like, do do people overseas, do they not also deserve to have a job? Do they not have, no. you know, the, the, the right to have a job and to feed themselves and their families and and better their their civilization as well? Well, China is destroying I, us, right? Well, yeah, there's that too. China <laughs> It's obviously destroying us by, you know, sending us all these incredible products that we're buying from them. I'm sure that, you know, Sanders TV was not made in America Mm -hmm. or anything, literally anything else. 
That's oh true. my god, I just I I can't stand it because they're also like people are basically saying you know there's this huge divide where it's like Trump and Sanders are the polar opposites, and I'm like they're really not uh, in a lot of respects. They are in some ways, but in in especially with the anti foreign stuff, like they they're right there with each other. Yeah. Speaking of, sorry about that. I, I speaking of China, China actually contact me about things I can't talk about. Um, uh-huh. so yeah, uh, I'm happy. Uh, <laughs> um, good. So uh, yeah. Um, and what was it? I guess what it also turned out was wrong. Uh, was I guess that 300,000 Americans file for uh, unemployment each week anyway, no matter how good the economy is. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 So <sighs> Yeah, I guess Bernie yeah, Sanders. So, so it's like, yeah, yeah. So like the sun came up. Okay. Yeah. Neat. Okay. I don't know. And, oh man, and going back to that, <laughs> the, the the you don't understand if you, uh, if you're white thing. It's like I like I'm sure that everyone being in Appalachia is is they're not familiar with it, with what it's oh, like to yeah. be poor, and yeah, they're that's... also not familiar with what it's like to have the police harassing you and mm-hmm. and you know just doing terrible things in your community all day. Like it's just it's such it's such garbage. Yeah, such garbage. Yeah, I, I've never I've never been hassled by the police in my entire life. Never, never. Wait. Oh yeah. All oh of yeah. Those me times. neither. All of those times I forgot about all of those times. Yeah, but um, I'm. Just, I, I will. I will say I used to get harassed by police a lot when I lived in Washington State, because uh, I you know I I worked nights and I'd be walking uh, home in the dark all the time. I I got stopped multiple times for that. Um. Since I've moved to New York, I have not been stopped by the police once. Yeah. Been here like five years. I've never been stopped by the police. Yeah, I haven't. I've been stopped by the police. Actually, it wasn't a police. It was a highway patrolman. I don't think they really technically count as police, but um, yeah, I've been uh, Nevada State uh, Nevada Highway Patrol pulled me over because you know, we have like these express lanes, right? That go. We'll have mm-hmm. one express lane that goes through the strip, so that people that are trying to get from one side of the strip to the other on the fifteen don't have to deal with with um like a uh, tourist uh, nonsense. Yeah. So we have that. And then I guess there's this, this white line. And um, I didn't notice that we were like, just gotten into the white line again. Cause it continues later on. And I, w- I was trying to get out before then. And I didn't realize that, like, Oh, I have to exit here. And so I snuck out. And then of course uh, he, he nailed me and gave me a warning. He was really nice. Um, and he was like, Oh, you have USSA, uh, USAA, you know, like, you know, which one of your family members? Cause you're not in the service. <laughs> which one of your family yeah. members, uh, was it? And I was like, oh, my dad was in Vietnam. And he's like, oh, cool. I was thinking, tell him to thank you for your service. And I'm like, no. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, that's my only experience with uh, cops so far. I try to keep my distance. I'm not going to go out and cop block because I've heard some oh, God, terrible no. stories about uh, Nevada police messing with people. So, mm. Oh, yeah, bad. And And the thing is, it's like I completely like I do agree that. You know, if you if you're a minority, like you are in considerably more yeah. danger when you're interacting with the police than than uh, white people are. I completely completely agree with that. But that being said, if you are interacting with the police, your life is in danger. Mm-hmm. Everyone and there are plenty of white people who have found that out the hard way. That you, I mean, it. There are so many of these videos of police abuse on uh, on the internet now, uh, which is amazing. I mean, it's not amazing that there's police abuse, but there's amazing that there's documentation of it. Yeah. Uh, like, and it's it. While yes, minorities have a a much much tougher time. Um, everybody who interacts with the police is is in danger. Yeah. Everybody, and it doesn't matter what color you're. Everybody, I've, I've seen. It I've doesn't seen matter if you're a man, shot. a yeah. woman, anything. Yeah. So. Um, we we haven't talked about the election other than, other than Bernie Sanders saying one two stupid things during the last debate. We should talk right. about the Republican freak show that's been going on, and I've, I'm, I'm <laughs> loving the, I've, I'm loving rubbernecking this election for some reason. Um, I I have literally been consuming my my election news through nothing but memes at oh. this point. Like I haven't I haven't been watching the debates. I mean oh, I've seen some of the like oh the uh, I've I've watched some of the the highlights where like they uh, they recut everything so Trump is just you know. Uh, like smashing everyone, yeah. or like the the, the Jeb Bush yeah, the videos. Jeb Bush were the, stuff was great. Oh my god, they were the best thing that I, that I think has come out of the internet in a long time. Yeah. Um, Everybody was predicting that that Clinton and Bush were going to be the nominee, and I was like, nope, neither of them are. And it's it's uh, because I thought Joe Biden was going to jump in, which he ended up not doing. So yeah, I had if to, he had it, would that would have been really tough for for Hillary? Yeah. 
because she has the she has the second highest uh, disapproval rating of all political candidates, uh, <laughs> all the presidential candidates ever. <laughs> and we'll talk about what, what what what's worse than that later on. But she has the second highest unappro- uh, b- uh, highest unapproval rating or dis- disapproval rating of any uh, any presidential candidate who's ever ran for president in the United States ever ever. <laughs> oh God, this makes me so happy. Uh, and. Um, so she's running against uh, uh, Bernie Sanders, you know, which is which not going to. But by the way, the Democrats have the lowest turnout so far, the low, like historic lows turnout, uh, voting turnouts. Wow. Historically low, which is why Bernie Sanders is doing so good, because they're, yeah. uh, you know, the Bernie Sanders people, the, those progressive people are very motivated. I remember being yeah. left and yeah. being very motivated. I was at every, every election. Didn't matter if it was you know president or not. Like even the little small ones that happen on an off year, I was there. Yeah, I mean they're they're kind of like the the campaign for liberty, uh, Ron Paul movement, uh, yeah. like that that kind of very narrow, very active subset, but uh, on the left. So there's you know way more of them. <laughs> yeah, but he, that that's what it takes for him to even be even take states for that kind of a progressive to take a state. That kind of a progressive social yeah. semi social. He's not a democratic socialist. He's not. I don't know why they keep why he keeps saying he is. I know they keep saying that. Like, it, like there there is a clear difference between yeah. social democracy and democratic socialism. Um, I mean, he still has the endorsement of the Democratic Socialists of America, and I'm pretty sure he's still a member. Uh, he was for ages and ages. Yeah. Um, and the, and they are literally advocating, you know, turning all all private property into you know collectivized private property, the means of production, the whole nine yeah, yards. Yeah, it's basically the the difference between Venezuela and something like a Nordic country or something like that. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. It's insanely different. Like he does not want to, he's not that, that far, but he is pretty bad. Um, I think he would, if, if he, if he could get away with it in his rhetoric, I think he absolutely would. But I think he's being strategic in that, like he can focus on the things where on the margin, you have the left uh, talking about income inequality and, and the crumbling social programs and, and all of this, um, he's able to really strike a nerve with them and kind of galvanize the more socialist side of the party. Um, but if he were to, <laughs> to, you know, take the democratic socialist talking points out, he'd be completely irrelevant. Yeah. Nobody would listen to him. Yeah. And then, um, so you have that, that's going on the democratic side you know, whatever. And then you have the Republican side, which, you know, we, finally, I, I, I was like, okay, Ben Carson's going to drop out after this one. Nope. All right. Ben Carson's nope. going to drop out after Super Tuesday. Nope. Okay, so he's going to drop out of this one, right? Nope. And I'm like, okay, so he's not going to drop out. This guy's delusional. Then he drops out. Fucking asshole. Fuck. <laughs> I, I think he was doing that to fuck with me. But, Probably. Um, so he finally drops. So he finally drops. I decided to drop out. out. And I'm just oh my god, that guy is so out. funny. I can't. I can't even, like. I can't believe that. Like most of the people on the Republican side, like I just can't even believe believe that these are humans. Like my humans, like my Carson humans. and Trump, especially <laughs> my human skin is uh, my human suit is itchy. I love that. Meme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. So he's gone. Uh. All the other and then Jeb Bush. I everyone thought that Jeb Bush was going to be the nominee. I was like, there's no way this guy is going going to get elected because I I I was aware of who he was before then, and I knew he was a giant nerdy pussy. And I yeah, was I, I wasn't aware of that. Like okay. I I was figuring, you know, I was like, oh god, another Bush, and he's been a governor. Like he's you know he's going to rise to the top. But then you know, like the second that you see him on stage, like he is just this giant wuss, just this. Just he's Lindsey Graham. Oh, oh my God! But he's not. <laughs> it's like Lindsey. Lindsey Graham has like you know like he he'll actually come after people and it, yeah. Like, like this guy is just the most like whimpering like milk toast, non threatening. Yeah, milk toast, <laughs> just nerd. Oh, the turtles were were beautiful. The deer, the turtles oh thing. Oh my god, the turtles thing. That just I I was crying. Like my <laughs> my sides hurt so bad. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, and then, and then, of course, we have a bunch of people we don't care about. Fiorina, um, Kasich, uh, yeah, don't care. Um, and then you had Ted Cruz, which I always think Ted Cruz is kind of interesting because he, he was a constitutional like law lawyer, so he used to like argue to the Supreme Court. So he has a lot of interesting things to say. The guy knows a lot about the Constitution. He's wrong about a lot of stuff, but he knows about it. Uh, <laughs> um, so I always thought that he was interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like any of them, but then 
No. So I thought like, okay, maybe maybe this Rubio guy or this Cruz guy will probably take over. But no, then Donald Trump comes in and I'm like, oh, this guy's a fucking train wreck. He's just going to make a mockery of it and everyone's going to laugh at him and walk away. And then I don't know what happened, but everybody fucking loves the guy. America has has fucking gone insane. I don't know what's going on. And here's the thing. So here's the thing. Here's here's the most important thing. And I've learned all this through Stephen Crowder, which, you know, he's a conservative, but, you know, he he made an interesting point when he said that, like, Republicans deserve to lose this election just like they deserve to lost the, the how they deserve to lost the last election because yeah Obamacare was wildly unpopular and so what did what did the Republicans do in order to like hit that glowing green spot on the video game where it tells you that this is the weak point hit this point mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they elected the only other person in the entire world that has that is <laughs> that has instituted a, na- uh, a mandatory um, a mandate on health care. <laughs> yeah, they the, so they, they, they got that. the guy who inspired the Obamacare bill yeah. with his health care bill. And and so yeah, now like, this election, like, what's what Hillary Rodden Clinton's weak spot? She's the second she's she's the candidate with the second highest disapproval rating ever in American history politics ever uh for for running for president. So who are the, the Republicans picking? The person with the number 1 disapproval rating yeah. amongst any presidential candidate in yeah. the history of the world. Yeah. So they yeah, just, I don't know, man. Yeah, so he's he's definitely going to lose. I mean, like he's he's only going to be popular in the Republicans because Republicans are crazy, uh, and he only appeals to the crazy wing of the Republican Party, which which they took them in when they came in with the Tea Party. They could have done what they yeah. did with what Democrats did with the Occupy Wall Street by saying, "Oh, we sympathize with you, but fuck off," which is what they should yeah. have done. Yeah, but instead exactly. they were like, "Oh, Tea Party, come on in." And now yeah. we're dealing with <laughs> now we're dealing yeah, with yeah. Now we're dealing with this. Yeah, and yeah, and and. Uh, Brian Kaplan actually wrote about this recently about like why he thinks Trump is doing very well. And part of it is people's anti-foreign bias, like the median Republican voter, like that's the issue that matters to them the most, like more than anything. And it was more than anybody knew until (laughs) Trump came on the scene. Yeah. I don't know. I still don't know if he can, if he'll win. Like he, it's definitely a possibility to, to, to win the nomination. Um, Mm -hmm. but at the same time, like the, when it comes down to the convention, the establishment still has a ton of cards in their hand, but they, but it is not, but but Rubio, Rubio is the establishment. I mean, Ted Cruz sort of is, but he's not, he's really not, uh, an establishment guy, even though he is a Mm -hmm. Senator. Um, he's really not that, that much of a, an establishment candidate at all. Um, just in the same respect that, you know, just because mm-hmm. Bernie Sanders is a senator doesn't mean he's an establishment guy. And he's not at all. Uh, he's worse. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Cruz is not. So he's he's the one that's the second. <laughs> play. The, the thing that we're getting out of the Republican part, uh, Democratic process is the establishment, establishment is dead. They're dead. Mm-hmm. They're, so they're trying to do everything they can to help Rubio. But Rubio is not going to do it. So they're going to end up like saying, well, Cruz is more establishment than Trump. So at least we're going to help him out a little bit. But mm-hmm. it's not going to work. We're going to see some. We're going to see something interesting happen after the uh, the uh, convention. That's for sure. Uh, are we going to get two parties out of this? It may be interesting to oh, see yeah, America get know. another par- uh, political party, major one. It's. I mean, it's it's possible. Yeah. This. I mean, this this could kill the Republican Party, or at least you know, not not destroy it entirely, but it could definitely fracture it. Yeah, definitely um, get a rift going. I don't make any firm predictions though, because I'm wrong most yeah. of the time. So. <laughs> I'm only Sorry, wrong about Carson. Refrain. I'm only wrong about Carson. Yeah, about Carson <laughs> and, and Biden. That's it. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I thought Biden would would have gone in. But the interesting and, thing is, what's going on with the other political party that's of relevance? Sort of not. Re- no, actually, it's not relevant. Uh, the Libertarian Party. Uh, <laughs> have you heard oh, what's been going yeah. on with them? What's been going oh, on with yeah, them right now? Some good stuff. Okay, so you have we have a uh, we have Mc- McAfee, which is the uh, alleged murdering, coke snorting, hooker fucking uh, entrepreneur. Alleged murder, mm-hmm. by the way. Alleged. It's been alleged. 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 And 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 he also is apparently suspected of having uh, like bugged all the police's phones and like was surveilling them. So he was always one step ahead of them because he was monitoring all of their internal communications. <laughs> well, see, I'm okay with that. Yeah, me too. Okay. But it, but it'd be yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you actually murdered someone, like that might not be the greatest thing for a criminal to to be doing. <laughs> yeah. And so then you have um, Daryl W. Perry, who's one of the free keeners. He's actually a really nice guy. I don't really like mm. what the free keen people do, but I'm friends with so many of them that I'm just like, 
I'm just going to ignore you. <laughs> I'm just not going to say anything. I can't stand yeah. them. I mean, I, I I don't really know any of the free keeners, so well, you I know can just Derek, call right? them all rubbish. Uh, sort of. Oh, Derek Freeman? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Derek's great. Yeah, Derek's yeah. great. Pers- on a personal level, they're all great people. I like them. Yeah. I, I just don't necessarily agree with how what they're doing. That's yeah, just, I, just, like, I yeah. hate their activism. I yeah. hate it. Yeah. They're not bad people. They're just bad actors, no. I guess. <laughs> I guess that's the right word. Well, yeah. some of them are probably bad people. Derek's yeah. not. Derek, I like Derek a lot. Derek's I great. great. Uh, I like Ian, even though Ian can be right. like uh, super biased towards activists. Like in, anytime an activist yeah. does anything, he's like, oh, it's activism. It, you should never criticize yeah. it. Don't agree with that. But he's otherwise, he's a cool guy. Um, I like I like, <laughs> I like Mark Edge. And the reason why I like Mark Edge is because he calls Ian out on that. I love it. Um, all the, oh, really? But all the other people, yeah. They're, they're, is they're that good the guy people. who actually was a murderer? Like, yeah. did time? Okay. Yeah, well, no, okay. he didn't. He didn't murder someone. Like, he was. Um, he was uh, an accessory to murder. Okay. And because he he lied and did all the a bunch of stuff during his criminal case, he was I ended up convicting as one of the murderers. So, uh, okay. he, he didn't. Okay. He didn't actually like. He was not directly responsible. Yeah, for the for the actual death, but. He did help. Um, well, <laughs> he's a cool guy, though. So you like this guy? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah he's, he's all right. <laughs> he's all right. But and then we have, um, but Daryl W. Perry. He's a cool guy. Um, he's a really nice guy. Um, mm-hmm. And then you have Austin Peterson, <laughs> who I know you are a huge fan of. Am I right? Is that is that? Oh my God, this guy. He's just absolute scum. <laughs> what was he's it? just absolute scum. <laughs> talk about him because you know so much about him you've even made like an hour-long video about him (laughs) i did i did at one point okay Uh, well i mean it was inspired by something stupid he said uh but no he's uh he's honestly like he's nuke iran sorry nuke yeah yeah yeah, exactly the the libertarian case for nuking iran was what (laughs) he was he was going putting forth uh so naturally i got triggered (laughs) and and had to make make a video about that um so apparently but he was kicked he, uh, out. He was kicked out of the, uh, I guess, the debate that's happening in Colorado. Yeah, the uh, the the Colorado Libertarian Party have uh, disinvited him from participating because he has taken a strong stance against the party's defining principle, which is the non-aggression principle. Mm. So he's, uh, they're basically saying, you know, you're not a libertarian, and especially not by the standards as dictated by our like founding documents for our part for our party mm-hmm. so you can't be here yeah but- also he's just he's just a, like a dweeb and he's so dumb like you would have to it's it's not even that like he's dumb it's like you would have to implant a brain into his head to like it's like he's got like negative intelligence yeah. so and uh this is also this this is I, there's actually a guy who's running for president right now who internet tough guide me and i it's directly yeah. not in like oh like this group of people over here that i'm a part of no 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 but like me yeah, specifically he, yeah <laughs> yeah that like that, it's it's bananas like the guy and he's he's just delusional and and he sets up this like all of his arguments always resolve to some sort of ridiculous conservative talking point mm-hmm. like it and and he's using that as like i'm a libertarian but i don't i disagree with these with these crazy libertarians you know the ones that that think that you know the government is bad i, I <laughs> like he disagrees with them and, it, and it's like he's trying to take some sort of an outsider status within libertarianism but the way in which he's doing that is by just parroting the the worst and most idiotic conservative positions that there are yeah like kind of like glenn Ble- kind of glenn beck was uh, unintentionally doing he's intentionally doing uh glenn beck yeah. like, thinks that he's a libertarian and i genuinely believe that he really thinks he's a libertarian and he is kind of kind of making progress in that area very so, small sometimes very small. he says something sort of reasonable sometimes yeah. but most of the Oh, excuse me. Most of the time, he's not. Yeah, I'm drinking soda on the air. I really shouldn't be doing that. Oh, but, I love you know, doing that and then care. burping. I'm all. I'm yeah. all a big fan of that. So go ahead and burp yeah. loud. I don't care. All right, I will. Yeah. But um, yeah, but 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 then Austin Peterson is like like he's the, so I really think that Glenn Beck fancies himself as a libertarian. I really don't think he fancies himself as a libertarian. I think he's using that because it's like, oh, it makes me different. Oh, it makes me yeah. kind of edgy. Oh, I'm a libertarian. And then of course, when he's now, now these actually kind of accepted in the libertarian thing to an extent, not really. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he can be like, oh, I'm going to be a little bit more edgy and say, Ooh, we should, we should nuke Iran. But, um, yeah, 
it's he's, not I mean, he's well just he's and he's just like he's just scum anyway like the way he talks to people is just awful um yeah i but... mean there's and there's all sorts of like uh I've, I've got like just tons of hearsay from uh people that i know that he's he's scum anyway i won't repeat any of it i can't remember most of it but <laughs> i love the binders um, but... full of women thing that he did <laughs> oh, i didn't see yeah. that oh where he said like um he who cannot be named, I guess, uh, leaked a picture of uh, Josie Wales' uh, topless mm-hmm. photo. Oh, yeah. And he, that. yeah, he was saying, oh, well, you know, I get tons of pictures from uh, women, uh, unsolicited boob pictures all the time from women, but I don't release them and because I yeah. have respect. And that's why women like me and not you. So, <laughs> yeah. But women He's, actually don't <laughs> like him. <laughs> they He's really so don't. terrible. Yeah. He's just so terrible. But I think it's hilarious that he's been, uh, you know, he's not, he's not invited to the Libertarian, <laughs> the no. next debate. It's great. But, but they actually let the real Republican into the debate, uh, Gary Johnson, um, who I, I kind of like, kind of. I like Gary Johnson. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I would never, like, it's like, none of, I'm never going to support any joker for the office of the presidency, but Gary Johnson, at least, like, you know, like. He called Trump he's, a pussy. He's got, he's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome yeah i'm all about that <laughs> like, the the more that like we can get politicians doing that i'm i'm all i'm all for that yeah uh, <laughs> and mcafee is like he's he is insane like he is like yeah. crazy but all of this stuff about cybersecurity is like awesome and i'm glad that he's talking about it and he's writing about it um and like i'm, I'm constantly seeing like new articles uh that have been uh he's been writing in like different press outlets uh, that stuff, I'm all, I'm all about it. So yeah. bring it on. Bring on the crazy. Yeah. And what was this about? We should talk about the Apple thing because you love Apple, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I do. You like Apple products. <laughs> you may not like the company, but you like Apple, right? I mean, I, I, I do. I used to, you know, I used to really hate Apple just because I thought they're, you know, I, I didn't like their operating system and I thought that their hardware was overpriced and uh, it is. some 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 models it is some models it's not um but i've come to find that you really do get what you pay for and with max the the you just do not have the same software issues uh now that i'm doing software development the you know it it's nice to be able to uh be working on linux at home and then using uh, Mac software and still having it still like the back end of that still being a Unix descendant. So it's, it's great. And everything Apple's been doing with encryption since the NSA leaks came out, all of their, uh, all of their messages are encrypted on their service. Their, their iMessage uh, protocol. So they can't even get the information. Um, and now they're being pressed to basically create a skeleton key for all of their products um, to let the FBI decrypt the information which, and which and, we should we should mention the fbi denies that allegation oh of course they deny it uh, yeah but i'm I mean, just i'm just I, we have to at least try to be fair right no but there's nothing to be fair yeah. about they're asking them <laughs> they're yeah. asking them to alter the operating system on the phone so they can unlock it when they do that 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 doesn't just work for just one yeah. phone it does it for everything so right. fuck the fbi fuck the fbi and thank you apple for standing up to them and and you know actually bringing this out as a as a topic of conversation a shitload of people use their products uh so this is going to be kind of relevant in their minds yep and there's there's rumors that their their next lines of products are going to be even more secure from this sort of uh government interference like they're going to try and make products that like they can't hack they wouldn't be able to uh Mm. which sounds pretty awesome to me i'm still going to stick with android uh (laughs) That's fine. Yeah. I don't, well, I don't yeah. care, and and yeah. and that's the thing. I really don't care about any of that. I do yeah. like the. I I I just I think that their their software is better, yeah. <laughs> for the most part. I just think it's better. Yeah. And by the way, uh, Lowbirds is actually going to get an app soon. Did you know about this? Uh, oh, really? Right. No, yeah, I didn't. We're going to get an app soon. Um, I guess Michael Dean bought this this thing where he can make apps, and he made an app for the for uh, fiend uh, the Freedom Fiends. So now, mm-hmm. like he was like, oh, but I can only, you know, I'm not just going to buy this just for one. I'm going to make a couple others. Did you want one? So he's going to help me design one. We're going to work on that later. Oh, but, nice. So we're the, we're going to have the Lawberts app, and it's just basically going to download the app and 
tell you where yeah. you can buy our shitty merchandise. But oh, I'm not talking about that yet. Um, but anyways, uh, so we're gonna do that. But um, but yeah, this 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 whole thing with with Apple and the FBI, it's a bunch of shit. Um, but, but at the same time, I can't really like applaud Apple because of some of the the IP shit that they do. Where they oh yeah, sue, I mean like, like they're not perfect. Yeah. I, I'm not irrational about my my appreciation for them, but I have I have come Some to appreciate are. their their products a lot a lot more than I used to. Yeah. Oh no, I know. There's I mean there's same with fan, Windows. Fanboyism yeah. kills the mind. So, mm-hmm. or maybe you, you a dead mind is attracted to fanboyism. I don't know <laughs> oh. how, which way that that train runs, but uh, but yeah, no, no. I, I understand that a lot of people are obsessive about that stuff, yeah. and I, I don't care about branding more. So I just care about what's what works for me. Yeah, and and Google, I love Google. I'm, I'm I guess I'm gonna be a fanboy, but I'll I'll be first to tell you that well, they they fuck with the they play too too well with the NSA, and I'm not happy about that. But other than that, yeah, no, eh, whatever. No one plays as well with the NSA as AT and T, though. Oh, and fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I think we should just close this out on one more thing, and sure. that is, uh, we all know that Ted Cruz is the um, Zodiac killer, right? We're we're yeah, all familiar that's been with confirmed. The, okay, it's confirmed. Yeah. Um, even though he was born like two years later, that's just irrelevant. Yeah, but, I, I don't see how that how that's relevant here. But I'm, I've I've come to change my mind because I've read an interesting article. It says that new evidence suggests that Bernie Sanders, not Ted Cruz, may be the Zodiac killer. I'm going to use this picture as the headliner for this show. And you, you should look Good. at the pictures of young Bernie Sanders versus the, pitch, I, the sketches of, of the Zodiac killer. They're identical. I've seen it. I know. It's kind of, it's creepy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely on board with this, with this one. Um, yeah, Bernie Sanders is definitely the Zodiac killer. There's no doubt about it. Sorry, Ted Cruz. There's, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, this, this has now been confirmed. Yeah. So. Uh, Besides, would the, would, the, would the Zodiac Killer really eat his own boogers on national TV? Mm, come on. No, um, I, can't, I don't think so. I'm def- I don't think so. Yeah, I think yeah, it's definitely Bernie Sanders. And look yeah. at the, look at his hair. Only a serial killer would I have mean, a hair hairline like or frayed hairline. Like I mean, that, we're, right? we're we're just asking questions here. Oh yeah, we're just asking questions. You know, we're just asking questions. <laughs> we're just asking okay. questions. Would would the Zodiac Killer eat his own boogers on TV? No. I'm just asking questions. No. The answer is unequivocally no. Yeah. All right. So did you have anything you wanted to plug <laughs> before we go out? Um, I could. I mean, I guess I could plug my YouTube channel, but I've deleted more videos from it. What? Uh, oh, so. which one did you delete now? <laughs> now, now we have to talk about that. I don't that. even know. I didn't delete them. I just unlisted them. Uh, okay. No. I, uh, if you go to mattpritchard.io, uh, that's my, my blog, my website. I'm talking about learning to program and all that stuff. So if you want to try and learn a really, really, really hard skill to learn to make money, um, you might be able to learn like two things from me. Yeah. I, my brain cannot, that's it. cannot work around programming. I've tried, I've even tried the little joke language that, that second life uses, which is basically Java mm-hmm. not happening. It's, my I mean, brain it's not for like everybody. That. Yeah. It's, it's not for everybody. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. But yeah. So what was it? Matt Pritchard.io. Yep, and to so- oh, you're back on Twitter. You're back on Twitter. I am right? back on Twitter. I'll put your thing uh, yeah, on Twitter. Yeah. yeah, so we'll put the thing back on Twitter thing, Twitter, and um, yeah. All right. So anything else? Yeah. Sometimes I just uh, no. Sometimes I just get the desire to you know nuke the site from orbit and, and start fresh. So <laughs> it's kind of like what happened with my YouTube, and uh, I did that to my Twitter. Yeah, but you need to start making more ad cap videos because liberty, freedom. Yeah, I mean that's how we're, that's how we win. That's a, that's this how is we how win. we win. YouTube. Mm-hmm. YouTube. All right, so I guess I should not say that. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT no-gov license. The BIPCOT no-gov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in, the, in this country, and in a bunch of Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about Fiend Phone. 
FiendPhone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com. F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com. Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone. I never knew remote audio could be this good.